Late last night, I posted a video of uh, me running up and down a hallway trying to get some information about this new ghost protocol. And uh, I woke up and there were a lot of messages from the internet. And so, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment, so let's, uh, let's answer some of the issues that you raised about the test. And one of the issues you raised about the test was the antenna on my quad. It's a little chewed up. To be honest with you, all of my antennas look like this. I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me that this was not how an immortal antenna, okay, that's an exaggeration, but you get the point. Everybody I know who has an immortal antenna just flies it like this, doesn't care. And so when I grabbed it, it was like, okay, that's just what I'm using. But I have two more quads and they do have fresh antennas because I made them brand new for this trip and I have barely even flown them. So let's see how that, what did, kind of a difference that makes. So it's just gone to fail safe, it's just gone red. Well, let's do is, let's just put that on the ground right here and unplug it and, oh look, what a coincidence. Here are two more quads. Now this one has an almost perfect immortal T, but it has had the ends soldered. And so the ends are like kind of near to the carbon fiber frame. Maybe that'll make a difference. Let's find out. Okay. Alrighty, alrighty, well now let's try this one. This is a brand new, literally brand new Immortal T, barely touched with the ends still on it. Let's see if that makes a difference. Um, I don't really know what's going on with this one. Like we haven't even gotten down to where those quads are and it's kind of going back and forth. Um, it's the newest antenna, but for whatever reason it's having the worst reception. This is what it is, but there you go. Another question that people are asking is, why did I test these modules in 150 hertz mode for crossfire, 160 hertz mode for ghost racing mode, when racing mode is really not tailored for penetration? The truth is that, that ever since I installed crossfire shot, that is a how I fly all the time. I appreciate the lower latency and the more consistent packet timing that helps Betaflight feed forward work better. And although the range of Crossfire is significantly reduced in 150 hertz mode, it's still more than enough that I never outfly my video and I basically never fail safe and I just know Crossfire's got my back. So I set the test up exactly how I fly. I'm not a racing pilot, but I still want the benefits of the faster refresh rate and the lower latency. And it seems to me like that's one of the big reasons for people, not just racers, but anybody to choose these protocols. If you can get lower latency and faster refresh rate, more consistent packet timing, and still have acceptable range to outrun your video, why wouldn't you take it? Also, I knew that if, I, if they were in 50 hertz mode, uh, there's no way either of them would fail safe before we got out of the hotel and I'd just be walking down the road. <sighs> but I could use the exercise. One more thing before we go. I figured out that if I put the quad into turtle mode, then I can arm it. The motors won't spin or anything, but it'll be logging black box the whole time. So we'll be able to look at the actual packet timing, lost packets, micro fail safes, and all that good stuff. Doesn't feel safe. Still doesn't feel safe. Four or five. Doesn't feel safe. Ah, boy. Tony's never gonna pay me if I don't get this thing to feel safe pretty soon. Fourth floor. Still doesn't feel safe. Oh boy, he said it had to feel safe by the second floor, and there was a bonus for me if it felt safe by the third floor. I'm screwed. So that's what that saves. Second floor, oh, there's one more floor. with me my goggles and they're showing in the DVR the LQ 
and the RSSI, but the RSSI is actually SNR. There's a beta flight CLI command that changes RSSI to SNR, signal noise ratio. Um, and currently we are at LQ of one and signal to noise ratio of nine. Uh, Crossfire can keep working down to a negative signal to noise ratio. So we're not even close to a fail safe. Guess we gotta keep walking. Still have a fail safe, what can you say? Tony Cake isn't gonna pay me today. He was never gonna pay me because I don't take money. Listen guys, if you think that all of the problems with the last test were because I'm a paid and bought and paid for trying to torpedo Crossfire, you're wrong. I'm just that incompetent. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh, negative four. We're down to negative four, negative five. Oh, we're close. LQ is uh, 70, 80, but signal noise ratio is negative three. We're in, we're in the negatives. We're real close to a fail safe here. We're real close. We're, we're really close to a fail safe. Oh, look. We're about to go under. We're about to go under this giant. Oh, maybe we won't do that. Maybe that's not a good idea. I don't see any people living here. Still have a fail safe under the overpass. Yeah, yeah. Still have a fail safe. Mighty impressive. Two, two. Slumfail safe. How are we at? How are we doing here? Uh, negative seven and twenty-five LQ. So we're 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 real close. It's not good. It's not good, but we haven't fail safe. Whew. Gonna keep walking, doodly do. So here's a recap of what happened. I started here at the hotel. The radio is inside the room of the hotel, so we have all the absorption of the whole building, which is why the absolute range is probably much shorter than you might expect if you're used to flying in open space. We went all the way down the stairwell, came out of the hotel, walked along this uh, road. That's what those things are called. And then as we went under the underpass here, that was the first time that we got an RX loss, which sort of makes sense because the signal is coming from up high down through, basically have to go through the underpass here, overpass here. So we got the first RX loss here, but I didn't notice it and I kept walking and came out the other side. And I'm glad I did because here when we came back, the signal recovered somewhat. I kept walking because I just, I saw a green LED and kept walking, kept checking. I actually got all the way to here, which is a total distance of about, just a little under 500 meters um, before I got a solid red failsafe uh, LED and it just didn't come back. However, if you look at the actual data as I come out from under the under, underpass, we've, we're, we've definitely solidly failsafed. The quad would have fallen out of the air uh, definitely some point in this area. Um, I feel like with enough speed, you probably would have flown through this underpass, uh, but then somewhere between these locations, I mean, you can go back and watch the video and decide for yourself, you definitely would have failed safe. Okay, now for ghost. <sighs> We're gonna go to mode and we're gonna put it in normal mode instead of race mode. And then we'll go to TX power and we'll crank that sucker up to 350 milliwatts. No, all the way to 350, please. There we go. Another question you guys had was, you noticed that the video quality on one of the quads was better than the others. It had more range. You wondered if that was related, like to the 2.4 gigahertz or something. It wasn't. The two quads had different video transmitters. I was just using the video as like a rough sense of how much video range you would get. I never intended, if I really intended a control for that, I would use the same video transmitter for both. But there's no, like two point, somebody in the comments said, well, 2.4 plus 2.4 is 5.8. And that means that there's a harmonic there. 2.4 2 plus 2.4 is not 5.8. Please do some, please do some math. I'm not very good at math, but I can add that one up. Just 
still not gone solid red. Ooh, gonna fall. Now, for the Ghost system, it has the ability to output both LQ and RSSI, but it outputs them as an aux channel. And uh, Betaflight is not set up right now to read them directly, so we've got LQ as RSSI in the DVR, but that's actually LQ. Let's keep walking. Don't murder me. Will it matter if we go underneath here? Ooh, let's go. I see more red than I did. Oh, solid red, just there. RX lost bad RX. We just dropped out uh, as we went under here. I'm curious if I go out the other side, will it come back? And if so, how far will we get? Batterx fail safe, Batterx fail safe. Wait, let's keep walking and see how long it takes us to fail safe again. To recap then, with Ghost, we walked the same path and as soon as we went up underneath the overpass, it just immediately fail safed. Um, whereas with Crossfire, as we were under the overpass, it kind of kept trying to come back and might even have been flyable except that as soon as you get an RX loss, you just, you're gonna fall out of the air. But anyway, um, with Ghost, it was just sort of hard gone the whole time. And when we came out, Crossfire sort of recovered and kept going for a little longer until Crossfire hit a hard red LED, not coming back fail safe right around here. Whereas Ghost had a hard red LED, not gonna come back fail safe right around here. So the Ghost did not get as far and did not deal as well with going up underneath this overpass. How do you want to call this? 250 milliwatts for Crossfire, 350 milliwatts for Ghost. Ghost didn't go as far. There's no question that when they unlock the 500 milliwatt or one watt firmware, or if you've already got a full size module that can already do, sorry for the sweating. Have you already got a full-size module that can already do one or even two watts, there's no question that Crossfire is gonna wreck this. Nevertheless, the point that has been at the back of my head, when I hear everybody saying, Ghost is a, a 2.4 gigahertz, what a waste of time. It's clearly not a waste of time, okay? Am I biased? I'm biased towards facts. I'm biased away from, from, what's the word? Ide ideology, idealism. I'm biased away from, like, just tri tri tribal fanboyism. This is clearly amazing. Is Crossfire more amazing? Okay. Just can't stand, guys. Oh, what a waste. Don't waste your money. 2.4 gigahertz will never do it. Do you see how far I got? Do you see how far I got? Now you might ask the question, why did Crossfire do worse than Ghost when it was in 150 hertz racing mode, but do so much better when it was in 50 hertz normal mode? And the answer goes back to the fact that Crossfire also uses the same low ra long range, chirp spread spectrum technology that makes it possible to get so much ridiculous range out of such little output power. But Crossfire only uses low ra in 50 hertz mode, not in 150 hertz mode. Why? The answer goes back to bandwidth. And this is one of the points that Immersion RC has made about Ghost. That I think a lot of people are blowing off as just marketing hype. And one of the goals of my testing was to find out if that was true. Because Crossfire doesn't use low RA at 150 hertz because the 900 megahertz bandwidth isn't wide enough. It just can't do it. Whereas up in 2.4 gigahertz, there's so much more bandwidth that you can still use the low raw technology even at the higher refresh rate. But when you go down to one watt, 50 hertz, low raw, then 900 megahertz, Crossfire just has all the advantages. It's lower frequency, it's higher output power, it's using the same low raw technology, 
The big question that I keep coming back to as I think about these two technologies is, does it matter? Because, as I've said, if you can outrun your video, then what more do you need? And I think, despite the fact that the only testing I've done has been just walking around a hotel, it hasn't been anything really rigorous, it's just been catch as catch can with whatever I brought with me on a trip. Despite that, I think it's pretty clear that both of these technologies can easily outrun most people's video. If you are a truly long range pilot flying 20, 30, 40, 50 kilometers, maybe Ghost will do it. I don't know, I haven't tested that. Maybe, maybe it won't. Crossfire will definitely do it. But for everybody else, I think it's pretty clear that both of these systems can provide the kind of link reliability and range that most people would want. And then it's just a question of which company you want to put your money behind. And that's not a topic I'm even remotely going to start touching. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Coco Kaka, subscribe to my daddy.